No. Oh, 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 oh. Did he get you in the mouth? It works on the fish. Bad, 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 bad. The Diesel episode of It's Meal the Dog has been enjoyed by millions of people since it was first filmed back in 2005. However, in the decades since it was first filmed, many of the techniques shown and our way of thinking about dogs has evolved. So, in this video, I'm going to take you back through the episode to give you some behind the scenes trivia on the show, answer some of your frequently asked questions, and I'm also going to give you some updated advice on how to train a dog like Diesel, knowing what we know now. Meet Diesel, a beautiful Siberian husky from Leeds, with a bushy tail, a silky coat, and piercing blue eyes. For Jordan and Becky, it was love at first sight. When his eyes opened and I saw his blue eyes, I loved his blue eyes. Amazing, fantastic, beautiful little husky. But in recent months, Diesel stopped being a blue-eyed boy and turned into a devil. I don't like it when he gets angry because they just go red. And it looks scary. No! She's discovered Diesel's got a dark side. Diesel! Diesel! No. Demon dog. <laughs> Huskies are an amazing breed of dog. They are very energetic, and that's the reason why they are not the dog for everybody. Movie Geek 89 makes a really important point that because Huskies are so popular, especially in the media, that a lot of people have been getting them. And then What's happening to them is that when they realize, oh my gosh, this is a lot of dog, a lot of Huskies are ending up in rescue. You have to make sure that if you're gonna get a Husky, that you have the right kind of lifestyle to give that dog everything that dog needs. You need to be energetic. You need to be getting out there and walking every single day. And that you give the dog a good canine education. Diesel could have gone either way, and I got there just in time. Since hitting doggy adolescence at six months, Diesel's behavior has spiraled out of control. He's turned into a sex pest. Becky's friends are constantly humped. He sprays his scent everywhere. Look, he's weed on the bed. And Becky's been scared out of the kitchen, off the sofa, no. and into tears. He probably bites me on a regular basis. I'm just used to it now. I am scared of him, yeah. No. When they decided to get a dog, Becky never wanted a husky. I wanted a chihuahua, but Jordan didn't want a chihuahua. And can you imagine me walking with a chihuahua? <laughs> and she wants to dress it up in little pink suits and stuff? I don't think so. When Dad's around, Diesel is the model pet. But as soon as Jordan's out of the door, Diesel turns. I can't sit and watch TV without him jumping up at me and pushing me off the chair and biting me and then getting really nasty. Becky's friends are worried. If he really went for Becky and she was on her own without Jordan, there'd be absolutely no way she could get the dog off her. And her mother is at her wit's end. My biggest fear that he'll disfigure her in some way. Hey. Do I ever get scared working with scary dogs? It's not scared, but I definitely have respect for them. Those dogs that might have a tendency to bite or have had a bite history, you have to be extremely careful. So everything has to be put into place to make sure as much as you can that that dog does not bite again. It's all about safety. And safety starts right from when I come in the door. Because if I'm nervous and the dog's nervous, that's just gonna make the dog worse. But if I've set everything up, so that I ensure as much as I can success and safety, I'm gonna be much more confident walking through the door. And then we can gain the dog's trust and then we can start to work with it. Incredibly, Jordan can't see anything wrong with Diesel's behavior. Instead, he blames the victim, Becky. Becky's not dominating whatsoever. She speaks with a light tone, she's only small. She doesn't even look dominating. Diesel! Diesel is driving Becky and Jordan apart. We argue a lot about about Diesel. It is having a, an effect on his relationship. It's pushing us apart more than bringing us together. To be honest. Because she'll just get more and more frightened of Diesel. It'll be Diesel and Jordan, and Becky'll 
come home. He does have a potential to split us both up if he carries on, but that's why I'm wanting to stop it now before that does happen. No. Dog expert Victoria Stilwell is the final hope. She's got 10 years experience training the most badly behaved dogs. One of the biggest reasons why dogs end up in rescue shelters is that once the novelty of the cute little puppy has worn off and reality dawns, they find themselves with a big, unmanageable adult dog. But will this hellish husky be beyond her? Charlie Crow asks me, is it difficult to train dogs with cameras in the house? Is it difficult for the dogs? Are they distracted? Dogs are adapting to new things in their environment every single day. And so most of the dogs that we work with adapt very well to the cameras. And actually it's quite surprising to me that it's not a problem. And it's all about how your crew moves around. She's really worried about the camera. So some of the things, if we have a dog that's a little worried about equipment, what we might do is just put it on the ground, maybe put some food around it, or just let the dog go and sniff it and see that it's okay. By the time we leave, Sometimes the dogs are all over the camera crew. They love them, they, they're sad when they go, they whimper, they cry when we leave. If we have a dog that has bitten, the crew, everything is set up for safety. So the crew is either behind baby gates or the camera is what we call put on sticks, the tripod, and the crew leaves before the dog comes into the room. You also have to have people that listen because at the end of the day, it's my show and what I say goes. And I don't mean that in a kind of deaverish kind of way. I mean that, that this is, you know, the most important, the most important being in this whole thing is the dog. And so if I see that the dog is ultra stressed, can't cope, we'll shut things down and we will reconsider and reconfigure and make things a little different and a little easier for the dog to be able to acclimate. Down. That's all right, just, just leave him actually. For Diesel, the presence of a new woman in the house triggers a humping frenzy. Diesel, no. Down. Pretty persistent, isn't he? He is, yeah. And he gets a little bitey, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can feel him nipping. He has got yeah. the skin there. Oh, gotcha. uh, what age did you get him at? Five weeks. Five weeks? Yeah. <clears throat> That's highly irresponsible. Puppies really shouldn't be given away until they're around seven to eight yeah. weeks. Eight weeks is, is the best. Yeah. This dog has had absolutely no feedback on bite inhibition at all. He's very orally fixated, mouthing, mouthing. Yeah. And he's mouthing you a lot, I've yeah. noticed. What's happened is that he didn't have that really, really crucial time between five weeks and eight weeks to play with his litter, litter mates and get crucial feedback on yeah. bite inhibition because his litter mates would have told him that if he bit them too hard they would have yelped and he would have understood that he'd hurt them yeah. and he would have released. Diesel's mouthing was truly severe and when I talk about bite inhibition I see so many dogs that are taken away from their mothers and their litter mates too early. So they come into your home and now their mouths are very, very hard. And that's exactly what's happened to Diesel. Diesel was sold at five weeks old. It's way too early for that poor dog. But there is a point with Diesel that he plays very roughly. And sometimes play can very quickly turn into aggression, especially when there's a challenge. That old idea that is still used now by some trainers, that you have a, to establish your role as leader of the pack by dominating your dog into submission. is bad for any dog. It's the very worst thing you can do to be confrontational and challenging to these dogs instead. I'm gonna redirect this negative behavior onto positive behavior by teaching them skills. I'm gonna teach you how to feel really good. I'm gonna play with you. And that potential for aggressive display starts to go down, 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 down. Diesel's humping and biting sends a warning sign to Victoria. When dogs hump, sometimes they can get a little aggressive with it. As they do when they're mating, the snapping at the back of the neck, the snapping trying to get hold of skin at the back of the neck, all happens when a, when a male dog mates with a female dog. 
Upstairs, the husky's getting frisky on the couple's bed. The bed, as well as being very comfortable, is also where your smells are most prevalent. Down! Down! Come on, down, now. Down! Down! Now, down. You can pretty much, you tell him to down and he gets off. I mean, he plays around with you a little bit, but he does get off eventually. Yeah. Becky, what would happen if you told him to get off the bed? Diesel, get down. Down. Diesel, get down. Come on. Get down. Oh. It seems to be his no respect for no, you whatsoever, yeah, and no. he's not going to listen to you whatsoever. No. And when Diesel finally decides to get off the bed, he leaves another sign of his total disregard for Becky. One reason why dogs wee on the bed is because he's putting his smell over yours. It's his bed, it's his domain. He's marking you. Most dogs mark bushes and mark lampposts. He's actually marking you. Is this marking? We used to think that when dogs did that, that it was marking, that it was marking to dominate you. Well, while dogs do mark, and they do mark resources that are valuable to them, I believe that here now, Diesel peed on the bed because either, one, he was getting a bit anxious by the challenges that he was getting from both Becky and Jordan, and that anxiety, peeing is an expression of that anxiety. But the other thing was, you can see that he was trying to offer play. He might just have got overwhelmed and overstimulated, and young dogs do that, and then they pee. Let's get away from this idea that when dogs tr do something that we don't like, that they are trying to dominate us and achieve rank over us. Concerned at Diesel's lack of respect for Becky, Victoria wants to know how she manages to handle the dog without Jordan. Here goes. Diesel, get down, please. As Diesel. soon as he's out of the door, Victoria no, no. witnesses the dark side no. of Diesel. No! Boy broke my skin. Right. No. No. Oh, 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 oh. Did he get you in the mouth? It went from the face. Bad, 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 bad. Let's, let's sit down up on here, OK? Because then he's less likely to jump up. I've seen many mouthing cases in my time, but this is something different. Poor Becky. I mean, she's living in constant fear, and that's appalling. The fact that Jordan doesn't even believe her, that's outrageous. Now, has he been neutered? Um, no. I want him to get neutered, but Jordan's not keen on the idea. No. Most men aren't. <laughs> it's funny, because most men don't want to have their dogs neutered because it somehow relates to having their testicles cut <laughs> off, which <laughs> sort of insane. But I always say to them, you have a pair of testicles, but you're never, ever, ever allowed to have sex, ever. See how you would go through life, how you would feel if you weren't allowed to have sex ever with all of these hormones raging through your body. Isn't that a bit unnatural? It's a dog that's out of control. This is majorly serious and I, I hope Jordan understands how serious this is. Concerned that Jordan can't see the severity of the problem, Victoria takes him to one side. I want to show you on this monitor of what Becky goes through every day when you're not there. How does it make you feel watching Becky go through that? It's heartbreaking. Mm. It really is. Do you know, we didn't want a dog like that. We wanted to farm the dog. I feel guilty for getting Diesel because I told Becky Huskies were brilliant, you know, they were cuddly, they were sweet. And it's just not behaviour, I just recognise him. I don't, I've never seen him like that. Mm. So what you've got here now is a dog that's had little instruction throughout its formative years, which are crucial formative years, and has now developed into a dangerous dog. So don't even think about having children. Don't even think about having kids over. Forget kids. This couple can't have any visitors to the house. This is getting Diesel, insane. Down. Down. <laughs> this is insane. This is insane. This is not good, this is not fun, it's absolutely insane. 
it's dangerous. How, what's your arm like? This, look at this bruise! Because he hasn't been given any feedback by you as the owners for bite inhibition from when he was a very young puppy. Major mouthing, one of the worst mouthing cases I've ever seen. When cute puppies become unruly teenagers, all too often owners dump them in rescue centres like this one. I don't think Diesel could take a place like this. I think it would stress him out a lot and he would get a lot worse. It's all right, I know, and I know it's tough to see it, but it's just reality. Some places like this will not take dogs that bite, um, and, they, and so the only other option um, would have them be put down. This is as serious as it gets. I think something can be done, at least I hope something can be done, but there's a lot of work ahead of us. If Victoria is to save Diesel from doggy death row, everything has to change. And today is year zero. I would say that at the moment, Diesel's the leader of the pack. He's controlling the household. I used to illustrate hierarchy in the home by using fridge magnets. And it was always, if it was the dog that was out of control, which of course a lot of it's me or the dog was, I would put the dog at the top of the fridge and then everybody else was underneath, sort of showing that the dog was running the household. And we have to put you above in Diesel Below. A, you're not a member of your dog's pack. Your dog is a dog, you are a human, they know the difference. So this whole idea of being pack leader doesn't really work. There's no doubt about it. Diesel is taking over their lives. Diesel is showing really worrying behavior. Forget the fridge magnets. How am I going to stop that behavior and restore harmony in this household? The first step to raising Becky's status is changing the way Diesel is fed. What I have here are two dog bowls. And here we've got some cereal and some milk. In the wild, pack leaders always eat first. What a good girl. What a good girl. <laughs> so Victoria wants Diesel to see Becky eat before him. This sends a really important message to him. The fact that he eats last means that he is the lowest member of your pack. Look at him, now look at him. See him watching you eat the food. While eating out of your dog's food bowl, that does get your dog's attention onto you, 100%, especially when they're hungry. That whole idea that it establishes rank is not really true. Especially when you do consider the fact that mums and dads in familial wolf packs and dog packs, a lot of them let their pups eat first. Science has shown us that actually when we share things, that not only gets our dog's attention, it gets the dogs to listen, but it establishes trust. You can pretend to eat a little bit of food and then give some to your dog. It's really powerful. Well, now you can't do that with a dog that um, doesn't know you, you know, or is very resource guardy over food. But in order to establish a bond, you can at times. Do a little bit of food sharing. That's good. Once Becky's finished, it's Diesel's turn to eat. But he'll only be allowed at his food when he obeys ah. Victoria. Good boy. Ah, ah. Wait. Ah, ah. Wait. Whilst ah, ah can be used as an emergency vocal interrupter, I would advise not to use it as a corrector. And with this food bowl, I would let my body do the talking. My very action of bringing the bowl up means that he doesn't get the food. So you can do that exact technique by putting the food bowl down if the dog goes towards it. You can bring it up. And you can do that and a bit lower and if the dog goes towards it, bring it up again. Your body's doing the talking without any vocalization at all. Don't worry that he's getting frustrated because dogs learn really well through frustration. Wait. Ah, ah. Good boy, take it, good boy. From now on, Becky will feed Diesel twice a day. A dog that respects you more is less likely to jump up all over you, is less likely to hump you, is less likely to mouth you. 
Um, it's just raising your status within the pack. Diesel's begun his journey down the pack, but the training's about to get a lot harder. You drag him. Hold on, now let him go. Let him go. The Randy Husky can't keep his paws off Victoria, and drastic action is required. I've just been humped within an inch of my life. No. Diesel, a fast and furious husky from Leeds, is tearing his owners Becky and Jordan apart. He's aggressive, territorial, and sex obsessed. Dog expert Victoria Stilwell can't believe the triple X behaviour she's witnessed. One of the worst mouthing cases I've ever seen. A crucial part of Victoria's training is to raise Becky's standing within the pack. Only when Becky learns to talk to Diesel in a language he understands will she gain the dog's respect. The word I don't want you to ever use again is no. And Becky, you always tell Diesel, no, Diesel, get down, Diesel, no, 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 no. He's heard no so much that it's almost like he believes his name is no. <laughs> sure, say no to your dog if you want to say no to your dog. But don't overuse it. Don't keep on saying no, 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 because what happens, you devalue that word when you say it. Instead of having to put so much of my time and energy into corrections, I actually put my time and energy into teaching the dog what to do in a certain situation. And I reinforce that. No is still a powerful word to use with your dog and you're gonna to have to use it with your dog sometimes. But just be aware of how you use it and use it sparingly. When you say, good boy, your body just is fluid. <laughs> la 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 la, good boy. Yeah, with the head action too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you go, ah, your body suddenly tenses. When a dog's aggressive, the whole face gets very rigid. The eyebrows seem to pop out at you. The eyes stare. Bit angry with you. Relax. Bit angry with you. Relax. Ah, ah. Down. Loud. Sharp. Short. Ah, ah. Very nice. Ah, ah. Ah. No, Becky. <laughs> Do it one more time. Ah, ah. All right, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take complete <laughs> advantage of you if you do it like that. <laughs> ah, ah, that's much better, much better, mile, million times better. All right, then. As well as scolding your dog when he's bad, Victoria believes it's vital to praise him for good behavior something Wait. Becky has Wait. never done. Victoria's brought along her clicker, a device specially designed for dog training. The sound of the clicker is a unique sound and we pair it up with something pleasurable. We click and then we treat with a food reward. And that means that each time the dog hears the click, the click is a precursor to something delicious. So he begins to see this little sound as a reward. Diesel, come. Good boy. Diesel, sit. Good boy. You mark it within the second of the behavior, within one second. So click and treat. Good. Sit. When the training's complete, Becky and Jordan will be able to phase out the clicker. Having established the basics, Victoria wants Becky to combine her vocal command with the clicker to keep Diesel out of the kitchen while she cooks. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. That's it. Go back into the kitchen. It's a great result. Until now, Becky has had absolutely no control over the dog. Why? Click and treat. So you still click and treat? Yeah, because he's still staying out there. For Diesel, it's done really, really well. Um, it's been obedient. Mm. It's, it's been a great feeling not to shout at him. It's fantastic. Like a it? different dog, wasn't it? Yeah. So far, so good. But Victoria is about to tackle Diesel's more serious problems using her sound aversion therapy. Dogs' hearing is four and a half times more sensitive than humans, so a loud noise is a very unpleasant experience for Diesel. He jumped up at you. And I don't want him jumping up at you, I don't want him mouthing, nothing. Sound aversion yeah. works yeah. at first, but no matter how painful the noise, Diesel just can't help himself when it comes to Victoria. All right, so now he's gonna hump me. 
Diesel, come. Diesel, Diesel, come. He stopped molesting Becky and turned his attention onto Victoria. I've just been humped within an inch of my life. Noise aversion was very popular 10 plus years ago. And it was seen as less aversive than a physical correction. And a lot of the times, noise aversion can be less aversive than a physical correction. But it depends on the dog. If you think about how acute a dog's hearing is and you tell them off with a sharp noise, it could freak them out so much that you actually could cause fear to noises and a potential noise phobia. And so how I would do it differently today for a diesel clicker training was it. We found something that he really loved to do and because he's a working dog, we worked him. He loved to learn. Then that's gonna intrinsically motivate you. You're not gonna rely on me to give you rewards all the time, but it's gonna genuinely make you feel happier. I can't train a dog that continually humps me. Uh, how do you feel about diesel being castrated? I wanted to stud him first. You wanted to stud him first. Yeah. Why did you want to stud him? I feel like he's missing out on something, you know what I mean? <laughs> and you know that's one of the major arguments. But what happens if I said to you, Jordan, mm -hmm. you're allowed to have sex once and then never again? I know where you're coming from. <clears throat> what would that be like? Terrible. Terrible. What he doesn't know, he won't miss. But a dog's thinking less about its balls. <laughs> it's... It turns its attention more on its human owners. It brings that respect up, that desire to listen. There's not all this testosterone going through the body, making them crazy. So will you, will you do it? Yeah. I'm in for it, yeah? I'm in for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's up? With Becky and Jordan on board, Victoria sets the ball rolling and books Diesel into the vets. Rather yeah. than have him fully castrated, she opts for chemical castration, which will lower his testosterone level. This way, training can continue immediately as Diesel won't need recovery Good time. Boy. Back home and Victoria can begin treating Diesel's most serious problem, his jumping up and biting. So we have to teach Diesel that if he comes in here and he plays too roughly or he jumps up, he gets removed immediately and he's taken out into the cellar. It might take two minutes, it might take longer, but he only comes back into the room when he's calm. I used to use timeouts a lot with dogs and actually they can be effective, but taking the dog out for a little bit and then bringing the dog back up again and then taking it out again as a kind of correction a little bit and then bringing the dog can backfire. So how would I do that differently? Well, Air wouldn't put Diesel in the um, environment with which he would rehearse the behavior. And then I would teach him what to do. I would give him other skills so he didn't feel the need to hump or to mouth. Because of the incredible things that behavioral and cognitive scientists are discovering about how our dogs think, feel, and learn, we can evolve too as trainers. And we can say, hey, I would rather and prefer doing this technique because it actually works better. It's better for the person, it's better for the dog. Because make no bones about it, he's a problem now, but he's only nine months old. When he reaches social maturity between 18 months and 36 months, then you've got a real problem in your hands because you're dealing with an adult dog. Straight away, Diesel's up to his old tricks. Okay, now do it, now do it. But instead of shouting at him, Jordan calmly removes him to the Does cellar. The lead on? Does it? I don't care if you drag him a bit sure. now. You see, you're doing it with the lead. That's it, out into the cellar. Only when he's calm will he be allowed back up. He's up. Hey, bye. But again, he jumps up and goes to bite. That's it, now move. Great timing, drag him a bit, fantastic. And he's taken straight downstairs. The new regime is not meeting with Diesel's approval, but Victoria won't back down. We might have to do this lots and lots and lots and lots of times because we have to do it each time he does it. Diesel, come on. Come on. Now I want to see what happens when you go out the room, Jordan. 
Normally, Jordan's departure heralds an onslaught from the husky. But Victoria's confident that Diesel is starting to accept his demoted pack ranking. Lovely. Very good behaviour. It's a marked really improvement. Good. That was really, really... Uh -uh. And even okay, when he jumps up, Put on his lead. he accepts the consequences from his superior. Let's go. Let's go. Move. You and I are doing this by ourselves. Jordan's not here. I wasn't frightened of him at all. You know, usually I would be frightened because I think any time now he's going to jump up on the couch and we'd start fighting and I won't be able to get him out. I'd have to shout Jordan down. And that's the first time when I've been able to take control myself. Pokemon Master Eddie, that's a great name, asks if I ever hear from clients after the show. People did tend to keep up with me. I mean, it's been quite a long time since we filmed, especially the first season. So, but I will, I'll get emails. Um, and I would keep up with a lot of my clients. And some of my clients have become really good friends of mine, especially in the United States. And I always love getting updates about how the dogs are doing. Sometimes I get sad updates because it's been a while since the show was first filmed. So some of my favorite dogs are now no longer here. For those years, those long years, the dogs lived long, happy lives with their owners. And at the end of the day, that's all we were trying to do with the show. Becky's finally gained the confidence to control Diesel. worked so hard. You are both the leaders now. Diesel is where he belongs, below you, and there's no more boys club. And to keep Diesel's mood calm, Victoria's taught Becky how to treat him with a relaxing massage. When you want to calm down, you use slow, circular, gentle, calming movements with your hand. His ears are back, not because he's being aggressive, his ears are back because he's going. Good. Diesel looks like a reformed character. The acid test is how he behaves when Becky's family brave another visit. This is good. Good boy. Look at your dog now. Less than a week ago, Diesel subjected Becky's mum and sister to a mauling. So when was the last now he's the lovable husky Becky and Jordan always wanted. Mm. And Victoria's work is done. I like it now because we're both working together that way. Mm. Rather than Jordan doing something his way and me doing something my way and now both doing the same thing um, and it's working. That's brilliant. He's all good boy. Sit. Good boy. Me and Becky can be a normal couple now, instead of fighting over days all the time. It's just like having a brand new dog. It's, it's, it's like a different dog. He's still got the same character, but he's not, he's not as nasty, he's not as, you know, he's not as aggressive. It's just really good. Thanks for watching this look back on Diesel. And I have a final question here, which is, what kind of dogs do you have, Victoria? And what kind of treats do you use with your dogs? All right, so I've had Jasmine. She's a Chihuahua mix. Gosh, and I've had her for about nine years. She's also a rescue. And then last year I rescued a Shih Tzu mix and her name is Bella. So those are my dogs. And really, I mean, trees, gosh, they love everything. I do give them a dog food, a really high quality dog food, but I like to sprinkle things like broccoli on it. Sometimes I'll have broccoli, sometimes I'll have peas, sometimes I'll have a little bit of meat, a bit of chicken, just to kind of change it up a little bit. And my dogs love that. Have you used any of the techniques from It's Me or the Dog? Let me know in the comments below. And for more up-to-date information, why not head over to Positively TV for heaps of new content and up-to-date information on training and understanding your dog.